When your family's in need of medical care, where should you turn? Come to Englewood Hospital, home of the most advanced technologies and medical equipment. Home to magnet award-winning nurses who deliver compassionate professional care. And home to more top-rated doctors than any other hospital in North Jersey. For your family's health, come to Englewood Hospital. We're closer than you think. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Dr. Gore's show. Today, we have Dr. Jen with us to talk about link between oral health and general health. Welcome to Dr. Gore's show. Hi, thank you, Dr. Gore. So Dr. Jen did his training uh, from NYU undergrad, then he went on to do um, dentistry in New Jersey School of Dentistry, and then he did his fellowship at Sloan Kettering in Manhattan. He's been in practice, believe it or not, for more than 17 years in New Jersey, where he specializes in implants and oral health. So, you know, we all go to the dentist, and when we go, we're talking about cavities, we're talking about, you know, whitening, we're talking about um, the appearance, but um, there's more to oral health than just the look of it. Um, the way the gums look, the way the teeth look gives you like a detective job to tell about what's happening in our bodies, sure, right? Sure, sure. So walk us through that. What does oral health give you idea about somebody's general health? Okay. Um, oral health, believe it or not, is linked to a lot of different systemic conditions. Okay. It affects the whole body in right. multiple ways. Right. Now, you know, focusing on the Indian population, Sure. you know amongst Indians we have a high risk of heart disease. Correct high risk of diabetes. Right. Uh, amongst Indians, oral cancer is the number one Killer type disease. of cancer. Right. Right. Uh, India has the highest uh, rate of oral cancer compared to any other country. Okay. And that's because of our tobacco chewing habits, Correct. pan. We chew tobacco, pan, uh, supari. supari right. So all of these things do affect the rest of the body. Correct. Okay. Uh, so as far as gum disease go, right. uh, in India we call it pyrrhea. Correct. In the U.S. we call it periodontal disease. Correct. Some people call it gum disease. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of different names to it. Sure. Amongst the Indian population, 90% of the Indian population in adults has right. gum disease okay. of one type or another. All right. So it's a pretty substantial problem. Correct. So sometimes like the gums look thicker, they look redder, they bleed while brushing. Correct. Are those like a signs of gum These disease? Are signs and symptoms one looks for. Uh, in advanced stages, you'll see loosening of teeth. Okay. Okay. And eventually, it leads to tooth loss. Correct. You know, some people will just come and say, oh my God, my tooth just came out. That's the reason it just comes out. Because it's not attached properly and the gum is infected between the tooth and the gum and that pus or the infection can make the tooth loose? Exactly. All right. So that's in later stages. Okay. But you know what? It's much more. It's much better to catch a problem at an early stage right. than at a later stage. Sure. So some of the signs and symptoms one looks for okay. is bleeding of the gums when you're brushing. Okay. Healthy gums should never bleed. Okay. You know, so many times I have patients coming into the office and they say, oh, you know, my gums just bleed a little bit. They think it's normal. It's right. not. Sometimes I also used to think that if you brush harder, you can make them bleed. That's correct. And that's not the case. Correct. Brushing hard does not cause bleeding of the gums in a healthy mouth. All right. In somebody who's got gum problems, gingivitis or uh, periodontal disease, you will see bleeding of the gums. All right. Okay. And I think we learned in our, our medical school and during OBGYN that if your gums bleed during pregnancy, that's a warning that they should see a dentist if they have not seen. Exactly. Because there's a link between oral health and preterm infections and preterm delivery. Exactly. Because it's a sign that there can be a systemic infection. Right. So you'll see uh, women having babies born earlier, mm -hmm. prematurely. Correct. They'll be born with lower birth weights. Right. So Some these growth restriction. Growth restriction. So, and, and believe it or not, this is all related... You know, one of the factors right. is the gum health. Correct. And people would not link that together, but it's right, definitely a link. Right, And like so a lot of times, I like in my first visit during pregnancy, you know, first visits, we say at least once see your dentist during Correct. your pregnancy. And they look at us like, why? Right. And like we, then I explain to them and they are so surprised to right. hear that. Typically for pregnant patients, we like to get them in every three months. Right. We find that, you know, we're able to stay on top of their health better and it's healthier for the patient. Correct. So it's definitely good for them. So like once you've seen this redness and bleeding, you've figured out there's right. some, like is there anything you look for systematically or you advise them about their health and how do you treat it then? Okay. 
So, like I said earlier, you know, you have the redness and the puffiness of right. the gums, right. bleeding of the gums. Right. Another symptom that people don't, you know, pay attention. pay attention to is the breath. You know, sometimes you'll get bad breath, mm -hmm. and it's coming because of the Your bacterial gum. infection of the gum. So it's not just what food you've eaten or, no. you know, right. So right. sometimes it's a sign your oral hygiene might Correct. be a problem. Correct. Now, something good amongst our Indian population that we do is brushing our tongue. Correct. That really helps with keeping a nice, fresh breath. Right. You know, and that's something we teach our patients. Right. And, and they're always surprised. They're very surprised by it. Like, what do you mean brush the tongue? Right. Correct. Uh, so the other things we're looking for mm -hmm. are um, some staining of the teeth. Okay. Okay. Now, supari, people who eat supari, they tend to uh, have chipped teeth, mm -hmm. broken teeth, and uh, you know, you'll see um, staining of the teeth. Correct. So these are the things that we look for in supari chewers. Correct. People with tobacco, right. they tend to have a lot of staining of the teeth. Okay. Okay. Um, so in gum disease, you'll also see sometimes recession of the gums. Okay. The gum, instead of being at this height, now They're comes down. down. Correct. Right. So as we have seen in the picture, that this is the first of the gum disease, right? How right. the gum looks. Correct. And how then there's infection, as we can see here. How, right. how does the gum look? That's because of the infection of the gums. Exactly. And, and then as the infection progresses, there are different kind of look to the teeth and the mouth that we can see on these exactly. pictures. Okay. So you'll see more loss of bone, You'll okay. see loss of gum, and over time, as that keeps going, getting lost, you'll have loosening of the tooth. Okay. And unfortunately, then that, that leads to the loss of the teeth. Correct. So even as adults, if you're losing teeth, right. this might be related to your oral health. Correct. Okay. Correct. And then there are some pictures of the tobacco chewing and betel nut chewing yes. that we can see how it's affecting the teeth and how it cracks because it's such a hard thing, right, when yes. people are chewing it. Yeah, like in this picture, you'll see the heavy staining and the chipped teeth. Right. This is all occurring just because of, you know, the... Eating the those hard supari. Exactly. exactly. Because not only it's bad for your health, but, but right. the physical trauma of eating that hard stuff. Correct. It, it causes fractures in the teeth, you know, right. and of course there's the, the risk of oral cancer as well. Correct. So, um, and the tobacco can also stain your teeth, correct? Right. So your appearance also gets affected. Yes. So it, it's everything together. Well, you know, they say the smile is the gateway to a person. Correct. You know, when you first meet somebody, what's the first thing you notice about them is their smile. Right. Right. If somebody's smiling, it makes them more welcoming, warm. Correct. So It says about their personality. Exactly. And now if you have the staining, I right. think kind of it restricts you a little bit to be open about yourself. Yes. So now we've diagnosed somebody with the gum disease. Yes. Um, what's the next step? Do you do x-rays? How do you see if the, how much is the damage? Right. So there's several steps involved in doing okay. a proper diagnosis for a patient. Right. One of the first things we do is what's called a periodontal charting. Okay. Okay. So if you look at my sleeve here, for example. Right. Okay. There's a space between my sleeve and my arm. Correct. Okay. That is what's called a periodontal pocket. Okay. The space between the gum and the tooth right. is a periodontal pocket. Right. If it's up to three millimeters, it's perfectly healthy, right? Because studies have shown that you, if you brush a tooth, you know, when you use a toothbrush, right. it can go down three millimeters. Okay. Now, if you imagine somebody who's had gum disease, right. that bacteria from that uh, gum disease right. destroys that attachment attaching the gum to the tooth. Right. And so the pocket gets deeper and deeper. Right. Okay. okay. So when it gets that deep. Unfortunately, your brush is no longer doing a good job keeping Correct. it clean. It, it can't go d deep enough. It goes, exactly. Okay. So if you have bacteria all the way down here, and you have you just brush only going to the top, you're just cleaning at the top. So your brush and your flossing is not good enough. Correct. Okay. And then what ends up happening is that bacteria will keep persisting right. unless you seek professional help. So let me ask you, um, even though you might do... You, you know, you're brushing, maybe flossing, which we Indians don't do as much. That's correct. And I know, Dr. Jen, you've told me so many times <laughs> we have to do the flossing. Right. Um, but what about, like, they talk about the mouthwash. Do you think, does it help a little bit to the to It helps a little bit. There's a few good products on the market, right. uh, you know, that, that do a good job in right. keeping the gums healthy. Okay. But again, it doesn't go down deep, deep down enough. the pocket, okay. right? So... We were talking about diagnosing, mm -hmm. so what we look for in the diagnosing is when you do the periodontal charting, you want less than three millimeters depth. Okay. Anything beyond that is considered periodontal disease. Wow. Okay. A bleeding on probing, meaning okay. if when you're doing the probing, if we see a little bit of bleeding coming, right. that's a sign of inflammation. Correct. Okay. Now, the other thing we're looking at is the x-rays. Okay. On the x-rays, we want to see good bone level all around the teeth. Okay. If there's loss of bone right. around the tooth, that's again an indication of gum disease. Okay. Okay. 
So these are the things that these are the indicators we're looking for. Right. right so now right. the you know people get classified into different types of periodontal disease. Right. Uh, but bottom line is they end up needing a deep cleaning for the most part. Okay. Okay. So when they come for that six months cleaning, in in that's when you're looking for all this. Correct. And that's why the preventive visits are so important because you can pick it up very early. Exactly. Okay. So in our practice, we typically do the periodontal charting at least once a year for every patient. Okay. Okay. That's 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 the recommendation from the American Academy of Periodontology. Okay. Okay. So once that periodontal charting is done, we have a good idea as to how they're doing. Correct. In addition to the x-rays. Sure. So if the x-rays and the periodontal charting is good, they get a regular cleaning. Right. Okay. If it's not good right. and we see a lot of tartar buildup, then we end up recommending a scaling and root planing, also known as a deep cleaning. All right. Okay. That usually requires some level of anesthesia, so the patient's comfortable. Mm -hmm. We go in under the gum and get in really there and get that bacteria out. Right. The right, whole right. purpose of that deep cleaning is to make it easier for the patient to get under the gum and keep it clean themselves. Okay. Okay. And for periodontal patients, it's very, very important that they get their teeth cleaned every three months. Okay. Okay. It's not like an, a, a healthy patient where right. every six months is okay. It's good enough for that. Correct. So the, the most important part, mm -hmm. believe it or not, is not the initial deep cleaning. It's, that it's, the, maintenance. it's the maintenance every three months. So that the, the bacteria doesn't build up. Correct. So Correct. you're taking care of it every yes. time. Okay. Okay. And do they need anything special, like at home, in, that three month, in between those three months? Usually do they need just brushing and flossing is adequate. Okay. Uh, in some cases, we do recommend like a water pick, a water right. irrigation, Correct. just to keep it clean. Right. You advised me that, and we've right. been using that. <laughs> right. Uh, and then also, uh, you know, the, again, I can't emphasize important enough, the, the importance enough of coming in every three months. Correct. That's critical. Okay. Okay. All right. When your family's in need of medical care, where should you turn? Come to Englewood Hospital, home of the most advanced technologies and medical equipment. Home to magnet award-winning nurses who deliver compassionate professional care. And home to more top-rated doctors than any other hospital in North Jersey. For your family's health, come to Englewood Hospital. We're closer than you think. Now, once we've diagnosed somebody with, with gum disease, now, um, apart from the disease that we talked about, is there something like a heart disease, as you mentioned? What are the signs of those? You know, how do you figure out that there's some gum disease happening due to the heart disease? Okay, so in, in the bacteria that's been in the gum disease, it creates inflammation, right? right? So that same inflammation goes through the body and causes other problems. Right. Those inflammatory products can right. go into the heart vessels, sure. like the coronary arteries, right. and they create buildup of plaque Correct. inside the coronary arteries. Now, as you know, in amongst Indians, we right. have smaller coronaries than the other populations. Correct. Right. And we are, anyways, more risk for uh, coronary arteries because of the diet and the cholesterol issues. The ghee. Issue. Right. I love my ghee. But. Right. <laughs> so those are the you know, risk factors we already have. Correct. On top of that, the oral health kind of plays in some role. Exactly. So that bacteria, unfortunately, will cause a higher rate of buildup mm -hmm. in the arteries, mm -hmm. which leads to a higher risk of heart disease. Okay. Now, is there a link between infective endocarditis and oral health, or is, is, is there a correlation? Sure. Uh, people with uh, poor oral health are much right. more prone to infective or endocarditis. Right. Right. Okay. So that's why it just is much nicer to keep a clean mouth. Right. It leads to a healthier body. Correct. So it's not just for the, the smell of it, the look of it, the bleeding of it, but also the better your oral hygiene, the less chances of infection in your heart, in, you know, during pregnancy, or an oral health. Correct. Um, now, another disease that, that Indians have a lot of is diabetes. Correct. Correct? Right. So there's a substantial correlation affecting the diabetes from right. the gum disease, right. and vice versa, the diabetes affecting the gum disease. Okay. Okay. So a patient who has diabetes, right. okay, they will have a very hard time keeping their gums healthy. Sure. Okay? Because that inflammation constantly keeps uh, affecting the gums, right. which in turn 
then the gum disease... Uh, and also diabetes makes you prone for infection. That's correct. So that, that's how it's going. Correct. And vice versa, if somebody has bad gum disease, they cannot get their sugar in check easily. Right. So there was a patient we had when she, her teeth were so bad that her, you know, her, her sugar was never under control. Right. As soon as we took her teeth out, her sugar control become much more manageable. Right. Because as we all know, if there's some sort of infection in the body, it's harder to control uh, the sugar levels. Exactly. So that sometimes is the cause for diabetic ketoacidosis, any infection, sure. and because it releases the steroids in your body and stress reaction. So yes, the diabetes gets a little bit harder to control if exactly. you have infection. Exactly. So, um, but that's a very nice point to know that if supposedly diabetes is not getting control, maybe look into your oral health as well. Exactly. We pay a lot of attention to people who have diabetes about their um, leg um, checkups, their kidney checkups, their heart checkups, but we never emphasize enough about their oral health. Exactly. And I think that's something you brought up, very important, that please, al along with seeing your podiatrist, your kidney specialist, your diabetic specialist, see your dentist as well. Right. And that's a very important point. Now, another good point that goes along in that same line of thought is if, you know, from periodontal disease, right. one can lose teeth. Correct. Okay. Now, as we get older, the teeth become even more important. Right. Because now, when you're a diabetic, mm -hmm. you need to eat non-carb type foods. Correct. Okay. Every food that is soft right. is high in carb. Correct. So if you have less teeth, you're eating more high carb diet. Correct. And unfortunately, that's when it becomes a bigger problem because when you need to control your sugar even more, it's harder to do so with the lack of teeth. And that you brought a very important point that a lot of times when we talk about different kind of diets, we ask, or the patient asks like, what I'm eating, how does that affect my oral health? So as you said, um, high carb food are very soft and they're easy to eat, Correct. but the healthy food sometimes can affect, like I love nuts. And then a lot of times they get stuck inside. So if I don't brush it immediately, I always am worried that there's some infection going to grow. Correct. So yes, nuts are healthy for your health, but sometimes not so healthy for your teeth. So is there any food which is really bad, like candies? We know it gets stuck in between your teeth and it's not good. Believe but, it or not, you know, from a, from a, you know, from a dental disease, there's two right. primary diseases. Okay. You have dental caries, right. cavities, Correct. or you have gum disease. Correct. Okay. Now, with dental caries, the main things that we have to be careful of is carbs. Correct. Okay? Anything that's high in sugar is going right. to cause tooth decay. Correct. A cavity actually forms when your bacteria in your mouth, which everybody has. Right. There's healthy bacteria. Sure. That bacteria is eating the right. same sugar and the carbs that you ate. Right. So if you don't brush your teeth at nighttime mm -hmm. and that sugar stays all night long, the bacteria is having a big feast in your mouth. Oh, yeah. And they're having a party <laughs> time, right? Party time, exactly. So... That bacteria, unfortunately, the byproduct of that is lactic acid, mm -hmm. which dissolves away the tooth structure. Okay. And that's how a cavity the forms. The enamel of the tooth. Correct. Right. And that's how the cavity forms. Right. So good foods to eat to prevent tooth decay mm -hmm. are cheeses. Okay. Okay. Uh, cheese is actually very good, and it's supposed to be, you know, cavity protective. Because of the acid in it? Correct. It's, it's the acid. It's also got, uh, it neutralizes some of the other acids that are produced by the bacteria. Okay. The bacteria in the cheese neutralizes the bacteria that's causing the cavities. That's very interesting to yes. know. Right. Um, you know, fruits and vegetables are good right. as long as it's fibrous and you get it cleaned off the bat. Right. Okay. You don't want anything sitting there for a very long time. Right. Like bananas, believe it or not, cause a lot of cavities. Wow. See? Okay. That's nice to know. Another thing we see commonly amongst uh, young kids mm -hmm. is Gatorade. Correct. Like the athletes. Right. They drink a lot of Gatorade. It's nothing but sugar. Right. Okay. So if somebody's drinking Gatorade all day long, you'll see... Uh, and they don't wash it down with, with water. Correct. Then it's going to sit on it. The key is anything, anything sugary or high in carb, wash it down and rinse your mouth out with water. Water. And make sure you're brushing every night before you to go to take bed. take that thing. Correct. Oh, okay. Also, like as you mentioned, like a lot of times you're eating salads and those salad leaves do get, you know, stuck in the thing. So I think it's very important to carry a brush with you or at least a floss, floss that yes. you can floss it out after exactly. dinner. Exactly. So those are the healthy food. But unfortunately, if you have to still keep an eye on your oral cavity to Correct. make sure they are taken off. So we've, we've spoken about, you know, the diabetes, the blood pressure, the gum disease, vice versa effects. And, um, you know, moving on to modern technology and advances in, in your field, especially sure. you do so many implants. Right. Um, is there something which is happening new, you know, apart from the implant that we've talked about in our last show about the bridge and different kinds of implants? Right. Um, is there anything new? 
There's actually some pretty f amazing technology that's coming about. Right. Uh, we have, we're now able to give somebody teeth within one day. Right. So somebody who's had gum disease, let's say, okay. and their teeth are loose. Right. They're having a hard time eating. Right. Their quality of life is poor. They don't like the way the teeth look. In a matter of a day, mm -hmm. they can come in, have their teeth removed. We usually do this under sedation. The patient's comfortable. Sure. Get the teeth out. Right. Put implants in the same day. Okay and have fixed teeth connected all in the same day. Wow. So in a matter of a few hours, patient goes home with a beautiful smile, right. looking good, feeling good, and being able to eat reasonably and, and well. And a healthier mouth now. And a healthier mouth, because right. now you've gotten rid of all the inf infected teeth. So it's like a one-day transformation. It's Yes, exactly. It's a makeover, it's right? A, it's a, an instant makeover. Wow, so that's amazing. So you take out the old teeth because there is an infection, you clean Correct. the gums, and then you put few implants Correct. to it's hold those uh, artificial... Typically, anywhere from four to eight implants. Okay. On the average, it's about six implants. Right, to hold those fixed tooth over it. Exactly. And, and that's uh, one of the one-day makeover, which is amazing. It's, it's fantastic. It's because a I remember when I got implant from you, it was like a few day process. Correct. And Correct. now things have changed. Correct. Wow. So it's this amazing. is only good. This works really well when it's multiple teeth. Right. Right. You can't do this. You know, for a single tooth, it's harder to do. Right. Right. This is like all in one shot. It's easy exactly. to take care of it, and exactly. they come out with a beautiful smile. And they look great, and they feel great. Right. Um, is there is this kind of implant? good or not good for somebody who has, um, you know, the because of bisphosphonates they've taken, yes. does that work for them as well? Because it's kind of like a bone disease, not as much as gum disease correct. for them, correct? Correct. So can they, are they candidate for those uh, implants? So somebody who's had bisphosphonates, right. now you have bisphosphonates for osteoporosis, right. and you also use bisphosphonates for treating people with malignancies, right? Right. right. So the ones that are administered by IV, mm -hmm. generally we don't treat those patients with implants. Okay. Because it's too risky to treat that patient with an implant. Correct. However, the ones taking something like a Fosamax, right. okay, with oral bisphosphonates, Correct. the jury's still out on it, right. but we've been treating patients with it without having any problems. Right. So it's been relatively safe. Right. Can and I say it's 100% safe? I can't. Of course. But it's relatively safe. Right, because usually, you know, my patients, when they are taking all this, we kind of, I always emphasize to make sure that dentists are happy with that because yes. sometimes, I, you know, we have issue. Correct. It's their oral health versus their bone health. Right. And, um, but it's nice to know that if they are ready to follow up with their dentist very, you know, thoroughly and there is a possibility they could still get the implant. Correct. Now, I have to tell you, the best thing is prevention. Correct. Prevention is the best cure. You know, right. regular cleanings. Right. This way you can avoid all of these expensive and invasive procedures. Right. Best thing is just get the teeth cleaned regularly. Right. Stay on top of it. Amongst our Indian population, that's something we worry about because they don't like to go to the dentist. Correct. It's not in our culture. Guilty. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> right. So, so I know it's hard. And especially if something is not broken, like you say, like, why would I go? Yeah, so like, it's not bothering I'm good. me. Right. I'm good. Right. Another misconception is people think by getting their teeth cleaned, they're damaging their tooth. Right. And right. that's a big misconception because they think that they're, they're taking away the outer layers of the tooth structure, which is not the case. Right. Right. Unless until there's a very harsh cleaning, like if, especially like it's not done by a professional. Correct. Then there is, um, you know, I remember like in old times, people used to have, I think some kind of uh, a tree root they used to clean their yes. teeth with, and then they would take it with salt and be very abrasive. Right. I think th those are different things than yeah, the cleaning like the, that the you do with the, right, yeah. the, the professional <laughs> cleaning that you do. So yes. um, I think uh, we've covered a lot today. We have spoken about um, correlationship between your gum disease um, and your general health and why it is important when your teeth um, you know, don't look right, if there's a discoloration, your gums are bleeding, as Dr. Jen mentioned, that's never a good sign. Um, if they are swollen, if um, there's like a, you brush your teeth, you haven't eaten, say, garlic or onions and your mouth is still uh, you know, not smelling good, I think it's time to pay a visit if you have not done to your dentist. Um, also, there are new advances, as we spoke about, uh, about different kind of one-day implants, and um, there's always a, a solution to a problem, but let's tackle the problem and it's just starting, uh, and prevention takes us a long way than uh, treating it when it's beyond our, you know, um, initial stage. So, I think regular checkup with the dentist is great, and if you would like to see Dr. Jain, his practice is in New Jersey. He has a beautiful brand new office. You can do a video, um, you know, visit to the facility on the website. It's amazing right. too. Have a video tour, <laughs> and it's it's very amazing. And they have up to date um, 
on the technology there. So it, it's great. Um, thank you for coming on, Dr. Gorsho. Thank you, Dr. Gorsho. All right. Okay. So good night. Good night. Till next time, um, stay healthy. Good night. When your family's in need of medical care, where should you turn? Come to Englewood Hospital, home of the most advanced technologies and medical equipment. Home to magnet award-winning nurses who deliver compassionate professional care and home to more top-rated doctors than any other hospital in North Jersey. For your family's health, come to Englewood Hospital. We're closer than you think.